everyone, I'm James. Welcome back to my birding channel. If you have been following my birding series, you would have noticed that I usually jump straight into things like locations, individual bird species or bird photography equipment. Recently, I received an email from a viewer and I would like to read a portion to you. Hi, I'm a new birder who just picked up this hobby and I was wondering if you could do a video to show us how to get started with birding. I'm not sure what equipment I will need as a birder and also I'm not very good at finding the birds. Well, thank you very much for your note and I must say that your email really had me thinking. All this while I've been working on the assumption that most of you viewers would have had some level of birding experience. And I have not done one that catered to helping the really new birders. So in this video, I will do a simple beginner's guide on how to get started in birding. It won't be very detailed, just something to kickstart your interest and keep you going and be there out in the field. Birding is one of the most popular activity, especially now in Singapore. It's really a very healthy activity, both physically and mentally. Birding is something that gets you outdoors of being immersed with nature. Physically, you get to interact with the forest, the birds and other creatures and other birders and you get a lot of exercise and fresh air. Mentally, it stimulates your mind to learn more, to have a greater awareness of your surroundings, about the birds, about their habitats, how they behave in nature. You will observe new things and begin to see new perspectives. And all this can take the stress away from your daily hustle and bustle. Birds can be found almost everywhere, in your neighborhood, in community areas, in the parks, along the canals, and of course, at the nature reserve. You don't have to go very far or need to look very hard to see them. While birding, you will meet a lot of like-minded people who very quickly will soon become your friends because of your common interests. You will find the birding community generally friendly and helpful. They will share tips with you, identify species for you and tell you the best spots to go for the birds. In reality, you don't need anything at all. That's the beauty of it. Simply get out here and be interested in what's happening all around you. Just with your ears and your eyes, you can already start enjoying observing our feathered friends. Look at the variety of their colours, their different sizes, the places they like to perch. Observe their courtship rituals and the nest they build. Each and every bird species builds a nest of a different shape. Did you know that? Why, some birds are even too lazy to build nests. They simply tompang their eggs with other birds. And when their eggs hatch, they let the foster parents bring up their chicks for them. It's really amazing. Observe the birds' feeding habits. What do they eat? Fruits? insects, nectar, or even other birds. 
Listen to the calls and sounds they make. The calls they use to communicate with other birds and how they raise the alarm to danger around them. You might want to get a handy copy of a field guide to help you identify birds during your field trips. You should also read some books on local birds. For example, Birds of Singapore written by our local birding experts. Or Birds of Southeast Asia to have a broader view of the regional birds. There are many of these titles available. Besides these books, online guides are also plentiful. The international eBird apps is one of the best. Any registered member can update the eBirds app and share with the entire worldwide birding community. Another online app that I will recommend is the Merlin Bird ID, which is an outstanding app for identifying birds. You should also listen to bird calls recorded or online to help you identify the birds you see in the field. Bird calls should never be used to bait or lure the birds out into the open. They should only be used as a learning aid for yourself and as a field guide for identification purpose. I will leave some links on the more popular online guides below. Of course, once you start going out to observe birds, you will want to see them up close. You will want to see details like the subtle differences in colours, feather markings and also to easily identify the species. So that's where some hardware like binoculars, a spotting scope or a camera will definitely help. Nowadays, equipment like cameras, binoculars, sporting scopes are getting very affordable. There should be one that will suit your budget. If you are just starting out on birding, I would suggest that you first get a pair of binoculars. Get one that is of a better optical quality because it is going to last you for years. Don't simply go for the cheap dodgy ones. You will regret it in the long run. Invest in a quality pair as much as you can comfortably afford. Binoculars come with magnification sizes like 8 times, 10 times, 12 times, even 15 or more times. Ideally, 8 to 10 times magnification is sufficient for birding. With the higher 12 to 15 magnification, you may suffer from shaky image and stability problems holding your binoculars. You also want to get one with a larger diameter, which is indicated by the numbers 30, 40, 50, etc. The numbers refer to the diameter of the lens in millimeters. The wider the diameter, the brighter the image as it lets in more light for viewing. This is my old workhorse which I have been using for the past 8 years. It's a Zeiss Terra ED. A spotting scope 
is also an excellent device for birding. The advantage of a sporting scope is that the magnification can be very much higher than the binoculars. Sporting scope magnification can range from 20 to 40 to even 80 times. It's just like a compact telescope. And some are capable of zooming as well. You'll be surprised, but a sporting scope and binoculars can cost about the same. Of course, brand and optical quality makes the whole difference in prices. Another advantage of a spotting scope is that some will allow you to attach a small camera or handphone to take photos through it. The downside with spotting scope is that due to the very high magnification, you need to place it on a stand or a tripod. That's because the higher magnification also magnifies any shake if you try holding it with your hands. The tripod or stand will keep the viewing image stable. Finally, I will come to the most likely equipment you want to use, the digital camera. In this video, I'm assuming that most of you want to do some bird photography instead of just purely bird watching. As a beginner birder, you may have been attracted by the beautiful bird photos you saw online and on social media and you go, wow, so beautiful, so nice, I want to shoot photos like that too. That's good. But before you start running, you got to learn to walk first. Unless you are already familiar with using a camera, you may need to upgrade your camera skills first. You should be very proficient working with your camera to capture good bird photos. You should know the different settings and which dials and buttons to use. If you are looking to buy a camera as you begin birding, I would suggest that you start with a bridge camera. Bridge cameras, as the name implies, is something between a simple point-and-shoot camera and a DSLR camera. Basically, it's a compact camera with a fixed lens like a point-and-shoot camera, but it has a zoom lens that can virtually equate to having a 600mm, a 1000, 2000 or even 3000mm telephoto lens. Of course, as you gain more experience, you might consider upgrading to a full DSLR with this variety of quality interchangeable lenses. The DSLR should give you photos of a higher quality than a bridge camera. A bridge camera may cost you a few hundred dollars compared to a full DSLR that will cost you thousands of dollars. Here, I'll give three pointers for newbies. One, Follow experienced birders on their social media sites. You can learn a lot from their methods and techniques. Two, join a birding group online. There are many groups on social media. Keep to those forums you enjoy following and stay away from toxic groups. Three, go out often with other birders share mutual experiences, and show some humility. The excitement of getting birds, especially lifers, 
can be very addictive to the point of obsession. My advice to you is to go at a comfortable pace, gain experience and knowledge first. There is no need to score on lifers. Birding is not a race to see who has seen more birds. There is no need to show others how many lifers you have on your list. It is the enjoyment and satisfaction you get going out to spot the birds, to take pictures and to mingle socially with other birders and to lakopi together. When you start posting your pictures on social media, don't be obsessed with the number of likes you get. That is only something to satisfy your own ego and is really not important. One common mistake that new birders make is to think that quantity equals experience. They tend to post tons of mediocre pictures to show others they are getting new birds. They crave approval and perhaps admiration from other birders. My sincere advice is to focus instead on the quality of your shots if bird photography is your aim. Simply select the best photos you have and share the beautiful masterpiece or two. Share some technical details if you like. But please, there is no need to share the entire album of your birding trip. In truth, if you do that, most viewers will simply skim through your album rather than view each photo and they might even miss the really good ones you have. You can always create your own blog or website to showcase all your photos to those interested. At this point, I don't want to sound preachy, but I will touch on some birding ethics and etiquette we should all keep in mind. It is important that you have the right values for your newfound activity straight from the beginning. There are no hard and fast rules written anywhere that says you have to do this or you can't do that. But ethics is simply your own moral public behaviour. Behaviour that is accepted or not acceptable within the birding community as well as to the general public. I'm very sure you don't want to be branded as an unethical or irresponsible birder. Just keep in mind some points that will help you develop good birding principles as you start off on your lifelong activity. Stick to your principles and resist the peer pressure and temptations from those whose value may differ from yours. It will be tough. One, the life and safe welfare of the birds are your foremost priority. Don't forget, we are intruding into the birds' zone of comfort. Two, respect the environment and the habitats. Don't do any gardening just to get a better photo. No trimming of leaves, breaking of branches or simply damaging the greenery. 3. Be an observer and not a participant in the bird's life. Do not interfere with nature or the natural process of wildlife. 4. Avoid using recorded calls to lure or bait birds. It can confuse and put them in stressful situations that might endanger their life. 5. Respect local laws, rules and restrictions. Don't trespass onto 
private property or enter restricted areas without authority. And don't go off track in the nature reserves or parks. Six, do not publicize or highlight active bird nests. Please give the newborn chicks a chance to survive. When you go out together with friends and other birders, there are some implied courtesies to follow as well. You should stay quiet during birding and move slowly. Avoid loud conversation and talking. Don't chase the birds. It will only alarm them more. Avoid wearing loud or distracting clothes. Try to blend with the surroundings. Respect other birders' position if they arrived before you. Don't go in front of their view or block their cameras. Okay, that's all I can say to you new birders and I hope this video will help you courageously go out and continue to enjoy birding. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. If you like to see more of my birding videos, please subscribe to my channel. Click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell and you will be informed when my next video is uploaded. Until I see you again soon, please stay safe, happy birding and bye!